Welcome to this week's video. It's the third part of a four part um, portrait painting in water based oils with uh, tips of acrylic. If you want to see the video of the painting of the body, I will be putting it at the end of this video. Um, it's speeded up and it doesn't have talk over, but um, I hope you find it useful. It'll be right at the end after the final photograph of the work for today. So today, what I'm going to be doing is working on the ear, working on the face a bit more, and putting in a bit of background. I'll be talking about background and how important it is and how you can have quite a detailed background or quite a complicated background with a figure without it dominating the figure. So I'll be talking about lots of different aspects of background. Right, as you can see, I've mixed all my colours up, um, not quite the same as last week, but um, I'll mix between them and to get the right colours. I'm first of all going to start a bit of work on the background because then I can see um, where my face needs to come forward and how it needs to go back. When you're looking at backgrounds, um, often the simplest is the easiest and the more effective. However, you can get, in the case of artists like Frida Kahlo, very, very intricate backgrounds uh, very detailed with a lot of um, interest. You have to be very careful that if you have a busy background it's not going to swamp your sitter. You want your sitter to come forward. You can use tonal values to bring your sitter forward so your um, sitter might be paler than the background or darker than the background. If you have a very busy background you might want to mute the colours in the background and have your strongest colours in the figure. So you can also use your warmest colours in the figure and your coolest colours in the background. I'm going to be using cooler greens in for the background and also there's a lot of light areas around where the beard is and also behind the hair so that will bring the head forward however it does get darker around here so I need to be what I might do is lose the hair into the background have a lost edge and um, I think that will work because the face will be much stronger so anyway first of all I'm going to start blocking out the darker areas in the background so I've got quite a dark green here it's quite vivid so I've used viridian and a cadmium yellow light and that's about it really. If I want to make it more olive, I can just add a little hint of a warm colour like red or burnt sienna and that will make it more olive. It's quite thin and transparent. So I'm just looking at the picture of Jose and I'm not trying to do an absolute detailed um, copy. So I'm just going to do the suggestion of leaves. I think this green needs a bit more red. It's not quite olive enough. Oops, that's rather a lot. Red's quite strong. 
so you can kill a color and I'm going to use some of this mid color as well I think so um, that side of the brush in the dark that side in the mid and I'm just going to work a little bit around the head up here it's still too vivid so I'm going to put a little bit more red into that one as well I very often find that if I mix a color on the palette when I go to put it on the painting it looks completely different and that's usually because the palette's white and you're putting it against a collar here so it will change the look of it because that's rather thick so going down there and um, up here so this is quite painterly and the face will be more detailed and finer work um, so building up my shapes a bit of a darker one there I'm using a flat brush here because I want the um, straight edges of the leaves so I'm going down here I've got to be very careful about what I do around the nose. I'm going to put in a little bit of a lighter area here. The chroma of this is very high. I'm going to add a bit of red into all my greens to tone it down a little bit around the nose. Now the nose will still come forward because um, it's quite pale compared with what I'm doing with the leaves. The problem I had with the photograph is that where his moustache is, there's quite a dark area. So it makes his moustache look bigger. So I'm just going to put in some paler colour around there. Going right the way around the nose. John Singer Sargent, when he was doing his portraits, used to work in the mid um, tonal value, the mid range, and then as he worked, he would put in the higher values, sorry, the higher tonal values and the um, darker shadows. Some artists will start off very dark and then work lighter. I vary. Um, at the moment, I think I'm working mid tones and light tones. So I'm going to be putting my darks on afterwards. Up here it goes very dark. I'm going to take a little bit of my black colour that I mixed and put it in. I like the fact that it's um, in the photograph he's under a canopy of green. I want to keep that feel. But yeah, I'm going quite expressive and abstract with this. Don't want to spend too much time on it. Now I'm at a darker area just behind the hair there. And there I see his chin. It's quite light, but there's a little bit of a darker area just in front of his chin. I want it to look like the leaves are going behind his head. So any light areas I will carry along behind so underneath his chin there's a bit of a dark area I'm going to put a dark area in but I want to make sure that his beard comes out so I'm going to go quite light around it up to his neck um, it's quite rough um, the edges the for instance here on the neck so when, what I will do is I will use flesh color to redraw that because um, if you can see I've actually altered the shoulder because the shoulder was too high and the, the shoulders were parallel so because I didn't draw it out um, at the beginning um, this is what kind of adjustments I'm making as I go along so I had to use background color to lower that shoulder however I think it might be too low so I will be painting over this bit of background, I think. There are a few different types. Ooh, that's very, very loud. A few different types of um, green colour in the background. That might be too loud, but we'll see how we go. Now his shoulder, 
is actually a little bit darker, I think, than the background. So going over to behind his head, it's a lot lighter on that side. So I'm going to cut into the neck. I'm going to check that my neck is right. There's a little bit of a curve in there that I haven't got. And then it goes down here like that. And you can see I use my brush in all different um, positions. I curve it round as I paint. I use it um, as a fine, a fine mark making tool, using it sideways. And then I'll cover an area using the flat of the brush. So this is a very vivid green actually, but I actually quite like it. So we will see what happens. I don't want it to over swamp him. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. This is the fun of it. You, you Sometimes you can put something on and think, oh dear, made a mess. Now, what I've done is I've wiped out a little bit of a dark round a line around the nose. So I'm gonna put in a bit of a dark, darker green, I won't go on. I'll go into my darkest green just within here so that the nose stands out a little bit because it is quite pale. The nose hasn't got its shine on yet. So going further afield, a little bit more dark in there. And I need to mix a bit more of my dark. Um, green to run out. So a little bit of Viridian, Cadmium Yellow Light and I put some red in it. I think I need some more Cadmium Yellow Light. Yellow is such a weak colour so that um, when you put it into a dark colour like the green you need very little green and an awful lot of yellow. It's better. Maybe a bit more Viridian. Right, um, I need to use my palette knife, so I'm going to scrape that off my brush and mix it with the palette knife. As you can see, it's so much easier. A bit more Viridian, more yellow. I actually want more of an olive one because the background I did olive and I really like the olive. So I'm going to take some of this dark colour, touch of white, not too much because it will make it chalky and I'm going to put more red in that down there. I need a lot more yellow in there, it's way too heavy. So again, more cadmium yellow light. This is um, a Lucas colour, Lucas Berlin. It's not as strong as the Aqua Duo. I used to be a lot more fussy about the make of paint that I used to use. I still am. I don't go really cheap, but I found that the Lucas, although they are reasonably cheap, you don't get the pigment that you would get in uh, the more expensive paints, but they're adequate. Except for now which as you can see, I'm adding a ton of yellow. I'm not getting anything. A bit more. Mm, yes, a bit more. And then more red. And that will make an olive green, which I do prefer. So hold it up against more yellow. And that will do it. So I've got quite a lot of that. So I'll just wipe my palette knife, which I never do. I'm trying to retrain myself because I usually end up with loads of palette knives with the paint dried on. Clean the other green off my brush and I'm going to go into this colour. So you have a line that runs down there. And as I say, I'm working quite loosely, apart from when I hit the face. I've just gone over, take that off. And 
and on this side yeah we have this darker area but for the majority of the other side it is um paler there's quite a lot of light in there as well as daylight so i'm going to wait and put that in at the end i'm muting down as i go now because i don't want to end up um having to repaint areas so i'm putting some red into my mid green And I'm just giving the impression of leaves behind. I'm really not keen on that, so I'm going to wipe that off. So I'm going to go back into my dark and darken that up. Darker area comes down here. Bit of a leaf over there. Needs to have a bit more pale on one side. And there are areas behind these leaves that are quite pale. I think a little bit more yellow in that. That goes behind the leaf, so the leaf's silhouetted against it. And there's a little bit of um, an ochre green within this area here. It starts to get lighter further down and you can see a little bit of sky. I'm going to put the sky in afterwards. Put a few highlights on some of the leaves. Quite a bit lighter in here. And maybe a little bit there. So I'm happy with the way he's coming forward. Um, I think the edge of his nose will be lighter in the end and that will bring him forward again. I can keep working um, a bit darker behind the face, adjusting, so maybe have it a little bit darker in here to make him stand out a bit better. Oops, chopped into his nose, not to worry, and repaint that. So all impressionistic. The focal point is his face. So um, so long as the face comes forward, I'm not worried about the background. It's the secondary consideration or even the third maybe after the tattoo and the body. So behind this head, you do have lighter areas as well. And that will send him forward. I'm going to go slightly over the hair because I'll redraw the hair. Because I'm not entirely happy with his head shape at the moment. I think it should go a lot higher. Now, over at the top here, it starts to get very dark. So I'm just going to um, go into my dark colours. Bit of this brown into there. This is just filling in at the moment, and I might do a bit more refinement later, but I might not bother. I'll see how it looks. I've got a few symmetrical shapes here, so I'm going to change it slightly. I think that green needs to be darker. So I've got this nice dark green here. I'm going to put a little bit of red into it. I'm working very thickly in the background. 
I actually am putting, I've got to put a little bit of linseed oil into there because this might be the final layer on the background. We shall see. So I have um, in the photo, there are a couple of trees here, which um, mm, it bumps up against the back of his head, which is very awkward. So what I'll probably do is um, have the trees over here a little bit. I'm not so sure if I want to have the trees, actually, it will start to look a little bit like a kitsch 1960s painting. I don't know if you know the one, I can't remember the artist, but he did do a really, have a really good living with it. But it was, um, I remember one particular one, it was a green woman um, in a jungle. And one that my brother had on his wall for years was a woman who looked very blue, leaning against a tree. So, and um, I don't really want that kind of a, a feel. So I might actually just go quite rough and just give a suggestion of shadow rather than actual draw painting of a tree. So a little bit of mid colour into there. And in here. I'm going to, when this is dry, put suggestions of um, the edges of leaves and uh, some twigs, that kind of thing. Going down here, it's still very dark. I've mixed an awful lot of paint here and I'm glad I did because I think I'm going to use it all. So many years ago I would have um, painted every leaf. Oh, that's too light. And now I'm far too lazy. Don't have the patience. And I've weaned myself off that kind of painting. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong if you want to do very detailed. Um, it's just I get bored spending a lot of time on detail. Finding that I prefer this kind of olive green than the vivid green of that side. Lost my picture on my laptop. Let's see. So over here, it is quite dark, and I quite like that because it sends his head forward. So when I finish doing the dark here, I'm going to um, do some of the highlights before I carry on with the ear and a little bit more work on the face. Because now I can see exactly what I need to bring forward and what needs to go back. So take that up to the shoulder. Like that. And while I'm at it, I could do a bit of an echo of the green into the skin. A little bit of reflected light there. Maybe even on the shoulder. Have a little bit of, oh dear no, too much. Have a little bit of a yellow going on in the skin. Yellow green. This is artistic license. I might paint over that a little bit. It's a little bit too obvious. I think a bit more red. Anyway, we will see. I might wipe that off actually. It should come off because the paint's been drying for a while. Alternatively, I'm just going to go over it like that. There, that's better. I'm back again. Anyway, I will leave that and get on with the background. 
So I can see within here some light, but I'm going to work the other side a little bit. I think I've overworked the other side. I'll just um, simplify it a little bit. It starts to get a lot lighter as you get down here. So he's actually got quite a light tone on his uh, over his shoulder there. However, it's much more blue because of the light. So I'm using a bit of ultramarine and a lot of white. And I might start to put in some of the lighter areas, which I can paint over. I'm going to put some over here. It's got quite a, br a nice bright light there. And down here. Mm, up here, there's some light showing through. And there. I'll go over those probably to soften the edges a bit because it is um, diffuse light coming through. Anyway, I will leave that for now and carry on with the other side. So taking up what I've got. And remembering to go down to the new shoulder. And then we have in the distance some um, leaves and branches going on. I'm going to carry on building this up. So for this area here, it is an awful lot lighter and there's some very, very pale colours. So I'm going to put in much lighter. That's probably too light, actually. So I think the eye will go straight to that rather than the face. So I'm putting a little bit of yellow into it. I feel like I'm getting that feel of canopy. There's a line that runs along there, which is quite light. And that will draw the eye to his tattoo when I eventually put that on. If you notice, I've painted the skin on the shoulder over the grey tattoo shape that I put in. And then I'm going to be painting the tattoo over it. The reason being it is... Um, I decided it's easier to paint the tattoo on the skin rather than the skin around the tattoo. And I just need a bit more blue within this area here. And as I say, I haven't quite decided the shoulder yet, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go over the shoulder. And see if that could see how that looks with a bit more light. Yeah, quite happy with that. So all of this is going to be paler. And because of that, I get, I'm get. i hoping to get the feeling of canopy. Bit of linseed oil in that because it's very stiff. I 
There are areas of blue up here as well. Bit of daylight creeping through the leaves. So anyway, I'm going to leave off once I've just filled this section and I will work this some more. Later. So onto the ear and the face. So he has disappeared somewhat because um, obviously with the background going on, he's he's um, he was against this quite dark olive and the background is quite busy. So I will be looking at that as I go. But first to the ear. Now the ear usually has a lot of colour. Most of the colour on a portrait is across the middle. And you find the forehead is paler and the chin is paler. So I'm going to concentrate on putting a little bit of warmth into that. And maybe a bit more warmth into the face. So I'm going to take my smaller brush. I'm going to use my small graduate flat. Oh, get it in front of, that's it in front of the palette so you can see it so it's very small and looking at his ear I'm going to expand it on my computer if you bear with me this is the nice thing about having an image on the computer you can expand and enlarge it right in so you can see what's going on the downside of that is you can end up fiddling around trying to get perfection so I'm going to start by putting on a bit of a warm colour so it's a bit of a pink. I think I'm going to pink it up a bit more. There, I've added my vermilion and some cadmium yellow light. So I'm just going to mix um, a warm ear colour. Take a little bit of this. A bit more pink. Uh, sorry, red. Quite orange that actually. So I'm going to see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's lively. So I'm going to put quite a bit of reflected red into the face as well because it will make it stand out against the green. There is a little bit of reflected red in there. So while I'm here, I'll just put that in, barely touching the canvas or the board. That's it. Yeah. So going on to the ear, within the ear is um, quite a strong red there. I'm going to use a cooler red for that. It's going to have a bright red ear at this point, at this moment. So I'm going to tone that down again. Go over it. I'm struggling a bit today because it's quite dark in my studio um, because the day outside is dark, so I can't see the colours very well. However, if I um, put my light on, I end up um, struggling with the colour of the light because the colour of the light is quite warm. And what happens is you do all these lovely colours that you think are right and then you turn the light off and you see it in the light of day and it doesn't look like anything. So the inside of the ear is a lot paler. There's kind of a purpley feel. So I'll add a bit of ultramarine to this colour here. And put that inside. That looks a little bit light. So I'm going to go a bit darker. Take some of this into that. And go over and it goes down here and into that red area so i'm looking at shapes of color and shadow shapes going it into his um the y of the ear it's a lot paler so i'm just going to get the shape it goes into there and up here I'm working quite thickly and down there like that it's looking very pale however the way the light is in the photograph it is quite pale it just catches the light and the edge here is quite pale as well The back of the ear is a little bit darker and I'm going to make it more red in there. 
And as you go over the top, it becomes a little more ochre. Quite light there as well. I'm going into the front of the ear, it's slightly darker. I'm actually putting my finger in my background. Mm, it makes a pattern. So what I have to think about is where I'm going to put my little finger while I balance to do the ear. So I'm going to put my little finger there on a dry bit and use that to balance my hand. So it goes down and into the dark area of the ear like that. And on the inside of that it is quite pink. Quite a pink ear. Mm. I think I'm over exaggerating the pink, but actually I quite like that. So you've got this flap here. And that actually has a bit of a highlight on it. So going into my light colour, I'll put that on. And then onto the ear lobe, it's quite light down here. Curls round and then goes up. Whereas this area of light here stops just there. And it's red on the lobe. It's got a very suntanned ear at the moment. And then you've got a darker colour going on down here. So I'm just going to soften that there, so the ear looks attached to the head. And also over here there's a quite dark shadow going on, mm, a bit more dark in there. And that leads up to this crease. And then I've got a little bit of shadow on the earlobe. Now the earlobe is um, a lot paler than I've got it, or rather the pale area is bigger. So the pale area goes down to here too much and then it goes up here like that. And there is a highlight on the ear up here. And then in the middle of that area there, it goes quite a bit darker. I'm not worried about the edge because when I put the dark on for the hair, that will um, automatically, I'll re be redrawing the edge of the ear. So inside the ear, it's pretty dark. So I'm just going to put that in. I think I've made this area a little bit too long. So I'm going to take pale colour. And bring this up a little bit. That's better. It goes dark inside here. This width is not wide enough within the ear, so I'm going to have to do something about that. So I'm going to just do mix a bit of ultramarine with this reddish colour that I mixed earlier. And I'm going to pull this area out a bit. So that's too pale. I have a bit of pale on my brush, so that's transferred into this shape. So we'll pop that in. And also it goes dark above as well. It's a little bit brown actually, so I'm going to use a bit of my black, a little bit of yellow in and a little bit of vermilion. And that will make a brownish colour. Like that. So I'm going to take some red, although well, I've got a nice deep red colour here, and redraw within there. It does go a lot darker at the bottom there. I might take some of that and put some in there as well. Like that. So I'm going to wash my brush. 
and dry it and maybe pull a bit of the paint around. I think I've made this earlobe a little bit too narrow. So I'm going to soften a few bits, a few areas. And that disappears into that dark shadow. Need a bit more shadow on my brush to go over that. So the gap between the top bit of the ear and up here and the bottom bit is a bit wider. And I think I'm quite happy with that for now. I need to put a bit more red in this bit. Hmm. There's a bit more of a shine on the ear. So I can go into my very light colour, which is off-white, it's not white. I don't use white for a shine because it will flatten it. Put that in, a little bit of a shine on the edge here and a little bit more over here. And I think I'm happy with that. I think my angle is not quite right, but as long as I get um, a lightness of Jose, I'm not worried about um, detail too much. Goes around there a little bit more. I can put some more red down the back here so that if I decide to change the angle, I've already started. Yeah, and I think a little bit more um, of this color into here. It's too light. That's too dark. But I'm just redrawing a bit. Mm -hmm. I do get a lot of comments about not cleaning my brush off when I go between colours. Um, Works against you sometimes, but I quite like the way you get um, a dark colour mingling into a lighter colour sometimes. Um, I tend to find if I just wipe my brush off and then put on the next colour, it works quite well. However, if I'm going from very dark to very light and I want the light colour to be clean, then I'm not going to want, I'm going to have to wash my brush. So this is lighter down here. So that's a bit better. I've made it a little bit wider. This also needs to be wider, this earlobe. That's better. This is too wide actually, so I'm just going to straighten my brush over that area like that. I can go into the neck a little bit more with something a little bit lighter. And this is where I'll need to swap and use my um, filbert. So into my filbert and I want a little bit of this dark colour down the neck. So under the ear is quite dark, however I think I've made it a bit dead. There is um, more flesh in this area. So that's a little bit too um, red. I'm going to go into a yellow open mix that I've got and add a little bit of green to dull it down. Over that. Mm, not entirely happy with that colouring, so I might think about changing that. There is a little area of light that runs down just here from the ear and within this area here I'm going to go a little bit lighter and also a little bit darker so I'm going to put in some yellow ochre into this mix here and a little bit of green 
a little bit more yellow ochre, lots of this pale colour here, and go in there. So there's a hint of green in there which will work quite nicely with the background. And I might use a little bit of this within this area here and over here. Like that. And maybe put a few hints of this lovely green into the shoulder. bit here. I need to change the hair because I noticed the other day when I was looking at it that the hair comes forward a little bit more than what I've got it. If I start to go over this, this is all dry, so if I start to go over it I'll have to repaint the whole lot, which if I have to do that I will. The advantage of water-based oils with them um, drying so quickly is like acrylics, you can wipe off something you've done if you don't like it. It doesn't work as well as acrylic because you can drag the colour and just push it into the colour underneath. But I use it occasionally if I've made a mistake on very, very dry paint. I actually have missed out his Adam's apple. So I'm going to put that in under the chin there and putting on that little bit of a hint of a green light has brought the neck forward I hadn't intended to work on the neck but sometimes these things just um, pop up and you see them and you think right better get hold of that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work the nose a little bit more and it is lighter on the edge so I'll be using my small graduate flat and my lightest colour there is a little edge of red actually on, on his nose I'm debating whether that might work quite nicely I put a little bit of red right on the very edge I think that might work it with the green to bring his nose forward a little bit more and then we have quite a light line going down here so this is what I would consider the finer details that's too light Well, he's starting to come out a bit more. He's got quite a light shine on his nose at the end here. And I'm going to go in with a um, paler colour under the nose as well. I've gone over the um, green, so I will just repaint that. It's a little bit difficult to do details because of the angle of using the camera and how far I am away from the board. And also the nostril needs a little bit of adjustment. So I'm going to use dark colour. And it goes up to here. And it goes a little further along the nose than I've got it. And then we're going to pink up this area here, make it a little bit lighter. Just going over the what I've done just here. 
still not happy with the nose I think it still needs a little bit of work it's not quite the right shape Lighter on this area. My apologies, I just had to do a bit of adjusting to the nose off camera because I couldn't um, get close enough with the camera. So all I've done is slightly adjust the nostril because I wasn't happy with it and I've uh, moved the shadow around a little bit and put a bit of red in. So it's quite minor what I've done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work the hair a little bit. So using my um, filbert, I've got my nice black collar on my... Um, board on my tile sorry and I'm going to um, just finish off the hair the hair is mostly dark so there's not much definition in it however there are hints in the front of it of blue grey so I'll be putting some of them in I'm going to alter the shape of it around the face The way his hair uh, works is it seems to come forward this way at the top. I'm looking at the distance I have here to the back and how high it is over the top. Um, so I'm going to just go in with very, very dark paint quite thickly. Um, there's a little bit of a bump there. So I'm going over the green. And because it's quite thick, it's a little bit stronger colour and so it will stand out a bit more. There are a few little highlights behind the head here in the background which will bring it forward but I can put those in afterwards. So behind the ear I'm going over what I've got. It's a trifle too thick so I'm going to put some um, linseed oil in it and we've got a shadow that runs over here there is a little hint of warmth in this, um, whereas in the photograph it's a bit more blue. I'm all right with the warmth. No, that's better. A bit more on it. So you have a shadow that comes over here as well. And it does go quite high behind the head. And up here, a little bit higher. I'm dragging it into the green, which I quite like that. I like the fact that you lose the edge a little bit. Going over here, I think it's higher up on the head. And darker in here. And then what happens is he slept on it, so he's actually got a little bit of a tuft that comes up here. And I like that, so I'm going to put that in. So I'm just putting my brush... Placing my brush with paint on the canvas and then flicking it up, pulling it off. And that way I get the um, curl. Goes out quite far actually, so I can take it into that light bit and that brings him forward as well. A little bit higher here. I think it needs a little bit of pale green behind here. So it'll come forward. So using my flat and go, oh no, got a drip of water there, that's no good. And using my flat, I'm going to put in a little highlight in there, just so it comes forward a bit. A bit more. And what that will do is you'll be able to see the hair a little bit better.
like that. The hair actually comes down lower over the forehead, so I'm going to bring it down. And looking at the side of it, I'm going to have to mix a different colour. It goes over here, so I'm just calculating it and working it out as I go. It's a little bit darker in there. And I'm going to um, put a, in this colour, I'm going to take some of it with my um, palette knife and add some blue into that because it's a bit purple. So I've got a blue grey, a little bit more yellow ochre and some linseed oil. I'll test that. I think it could be a bit paler. I'm going to take that and put it all together over here and mix a bit more white into it. I don't need much. And taking my filbert, I'm going to my darker grey first. And the darker grey does come, it's still too purple. Hmm, a bit more blue. And a bit more yellow ochre. Let's see how that goes. Don't forget to wipe the palette knife. So I'll wipe off what I've got on my brush and go into this. Actually, I want to go into my darker grey. So looking at Jose, it goes down here. It's quite a bit paler. Mm, I'm looking at the shape here, which is not right. It goes, drops down there a little bit more. Into there. And I think I'll use my flat brush. It's a bit of green in there. Um, there are a few paler lines going that way. And then I'm going to go to my dark colour. I'm going to put a bit of blue in there. And just work into these paler lines that I've put on. Too much blue. <laughs> so I'll mix a bit more of the dark into the blue. And it goes down there. And all this area is quite dark. And I can see there's a few um, lines going on in here. Oh, I've actually caught a little bit of white, which um, gives him a bit of highlight. It's actually making him look older than he is. So I might take a few of those out. It's much wider over here. Too much on my brush. So I have quite a few colours going on in my brush. I'm getting some pale lines and some um, dark lines which is nice and then you do get a little bit of a darker area down here however there is a hint of a brown in there a hint of flesh i'm still not sure about the height of this whether it should be higher up but that's something i'll have to reassess it is quite pale down the side of where the hair is, so I will be working on that as well. And into here. And you've got a bit of a dark line along here. I'm not sure about that. I might take that off. So I just use, you can use... Um, linseed oil to wipe it off or a little bit of water 
because it's dry underneath it'll come off quite easily what that it does tend to do is uh, make it a bit blurred so then you have to paint over I'm going to work on the flesh tones a little bit now and tweak the ear somewhat so a bit lighter in here a bit of a dark there and above the eye I'm not very happy with so I'm going to be putting in a bit more um, solid paint so a yellow ochre mix to go above the eye more yellow ochre in that so as you can see I mix between all the colors to get different subtle changes of hue I think I can afford to go um, a little bit um, lighter in the highlights I think when I put the white in in the eye it will change the eye angle So this goes down here a bit and I think actually the eyelashes need to go up a bit more of an angle just here and that will change his eye position. I'm going over here there's a grey area and put in a bit of a dark grey there and use my darkest colour to go over it a bit to tone it down and then where the hair meets the head there's a little bit of a shadow just going down here and then it's lighter the skin as it reaches the hairline I want it to be too light so I'm going to go in with the yellow oak mix put a little bit of red in and see how that looks that's actually a bit pale so a little bit darker and then I'll use my dark color that I have here to soften the edge of it a bit At the side of the forehead it's a little bit paler over here and on the forehead it's quite a bit paler than I have it as well I think the angle inside the eye should be slightly higher as well. We'll take that up, just cutting off some of the eyelash. That needs a little bit of work, but it's getting there, I think. A bit darker in the eyebrow. Darker over here. And in here so it's also pale on this side of the forehead as well and up near the hair at the top here it's paler You've got a few darker shadows going on in the forehead, which I will lighten. And it's paler. Just into the eyebrow as well. 
So I'm starting to look at my tonal values, see if ones could be lightened, see what can be darkened to bring Jose out on the background. I think down the edge of his nose again, find a place to put my finger, could be paler. And within the shadow, maybe a hint more red. I'll bring that down and soften it. And going down the side of the nose definitely needs to be a bit more pale. Which is here. And over the side of the nose as well, just here. So I am starting now to work on the finer details. This pay layer actually goes across and into this side. However, the shadow of the cheek comes in a little bit more than I've got it into the face. So I'm just going to put some of that in. So I'm basically painting over what I already have to change things a little bit oops I've accidentally put a bit of red in there so I'll just get some thick paint and go over that there is a paler area here as well and down here just here is pale And a bit down there on the side of the nose. And down the side of the back of that eye is, is also paler. So I'm just having to lighten up a little bit in the lighter areas. Oops, that's a bit too pale. Never mind. I think the eyelid comes over a bit more. And I'm just going to knock that down a bit. Still think the nose could go a little bit paler at the end. And that brings it out a bit. I'm going to look at the lips a bit now. Because this top lip is quite pale. Under the moustache. And the bottom lip's a lot more pale than I've got. Going across over there. Now going down from the beard, the beard is, is um, paler than I've got it, so I'm going to lighten that. And the top lip curves into that bit of beard. So much darker. Just in this area here, oops, that was a dab in the wrong, wrong place. I'll have to paint over that. It's a lot lighter in this area here 
especially down this side of the moustache as it goes down. So I'm going to take a little bit more space for the skin and also the bottom of the lip curves in a different way to the way I've got it. The light drops down here and goes into the chin a bit more, into the beard. So I feel like I'm getting a little bit more of a lightness. I feel like I've made his face a little bit taut. Um, so I'm going to have to try and uh, do a lot of observation to see how I can uh, relax it a bit. And put a little bit of red into the lips, make a shadow. That's a bit better. And a bit of red into this area here. Because it's a photograph, it does bleach everything. So um, you have to use a bit of artistic license, as I've said before. Let's tweak this a little bit. Soften that. And I think under the beard, it's a bit lower than what I've got it maybe. But there is a dark shadow under there, so I'll put that in. I think I have chopped off his chin a bit. Into there a bit darker. And then at the front of the beard, you do have um, where the light hits it, quite a pale area. So looking over here, there are a few strokes of beard. I think I brought it out too far now. I'm going to take some green and just paint over that that I've done. I think actually the bid under the mouth comes out further. Over here. Like that. I'm looking at the hair and I think it's higher on the head. So um, I'm going to take my um, filbert again. And just stack up the hair a little bit up here. Also, you got a little bit of a tuft there, so I might put that in. You notice I'm not painting every hair. So um, I don't tend to do that. When, when tackling your hair, you just want to look for lights and darks, and then maybe you could put the odd hair in. There's also a little highlight just on the way the hair curls around here. And I'll just fill in a little bit in the back with a bit of black. Actually, that's quite nice, that purplish colour. I'll put a little bit in here. I'm going to have to put a bit of reflective green in there as well in the hair, I think. So maybe in the top here. Maybe in the side here. The top here. Like that. A bit more blue into my black because it is too red. I think slightly more on the back of the head. And I think that's about it for the hair. I'm 
And it's got a little bit of a highlight that runs through up here. That's slightly too much. Tone that down. And I think I'm thinking a bit of green just there. A bit more up here. And then it goes slightly higher here. But the hair is disappearing into the background, which I don't mind. And I think that's it for today. Um, so next week will be the last week and what i'll be doing i'll be doing a little bit of work in the uh, meantime in the background and the body so when it comes to next week i will be finalizing and maybe doing a bit of glazing depending how i feel um so i hope you're progressing well with your own paintings and i look forward to seeing you next week bye <laughs>